Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things. Now today I thought I would have a chat about Charles Dickens because, you know, I don't talk about Charles Dickens enough on this channel. So I realised the other day that it's now been 10 years, nearly to the week since I first discovered Charles Dickens, since I first read a Charles Dickens novel. The first Dickens book I ever read was Our Mutual Friend, which I read back in June-July time of 2007. So I thought I would make a kind of chatty video talking about Dickens and me and Dickens and how I have been enjoying Dickens over the last 10 years and what Dickens has meant to me and to my life over the last 10 years. I've been really enjoying recently on Booktube watching a lot of Booktubers making videos about Harry Potter for the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter and how Harry Potter has changed their life. And the defining reading experience of my teenage years was Dickens, not Harry Potter. So while I don't have that same nostalgia and I can't make that kind of video exactly, I can make a similarly nostalgic video about Dickens and what Dickens has meant to my life. So this is not going to be a video talking about who Dickens was or what books he wrote or why you should read them. I have made those videos before and I will link them down below. But I just wanted to have a chat about Dickens and my experience with Dickens at my 10 years of like Dickens love. So yes, let's let's do that. So although Our Mutual Friend was the first Dickens book I ever read back in 2000, that was not actually my first experience of Dickens. My first experience of Dickens, I guess, or the first time I thought that Dickens might be an author I would really love, was when I went to see a stage production of Great Expectations back in 2005, so I would have been 12, it would have been a good two years or at least a year and a half before I ever read any Dickens. And this stage adaptation of Great Expectations was put on by the Royal Shakespeare Company in Stratford-upon-Avon, and it was simply incredible. Like, I remember it really, really well considering I was 12, and I don't remember a lot else from when I was 12. And I remember the story of Great Expectations hooked me massively. I thought it was wonderful. I found like the twisting where expectations so shocking and amazing and I loved it and I loved Wemmick and that, that surprises me because I don't even think they did that much with him in the stage adaptation. Like he wasn't a big character and now he is my favourite character in Great Expectations. Even in that adaptation that he was not a massive part of I still adored him as a character and they managed to capture him so well. So when I saw the adaptation I knew that Dickens might be an author I would like but it was another two years until I read anything by him. But the first novel I ever read by Charles Dickens as I've said many many times before is Army friend, his last novel, which was the one I read first. It remains my favourite book of all time, though I don't know that it was my favourite book of all time when I read it. I can't remember at what point it became my favourite book of all time. Certainly for years now, certainly since I was like 17, 18, have I said that Our Mutual Friend is my favourite book ever, and I do adore it an awful lot. This is my favourite book of all time, and it always will be. Like, no book will ever overtake it in my love. It will always be my favourite book. And I can say that with certainty because... It doesn't matter if I read a book that's better than Our Mutual Friend. It doesn't even matter if I read a book that I enjoy more than Our Mutual Friend. There will never be a book that I love more than that book. Like, I have read books that I think are better, objectively, than Our Mutual Friend. I think I've even probably read books that as a whole, I enjoyed the reading experience of more than Our Mutual Friend, but nothing will ever beat my love for it. Like, I can't, I can't explain it. It's become something that is beyond logic and objectivity. It's just, I love that book so much and I'm so familiar with it and I've loved it for so long and it's been my favourite book for nearly 10 years. In the same way, I think that Charles Dickens will always be my favourite author and it's not that there aren't authors who I enjoy equally to Dickens. Like, I can't, I can't, I find it really hard to explain. I probably enjoy reading Elizabeth Gaskell's novels as much and sometimes more than I enjoy reading Dickens novels. I sometimes enjoy reading Jane Austen novels more than I enjoy reading Dickens novels, but he will always be my favourite. I will always love him more. Like, you can't beat him. And I think it's partly because I find him so fascinating, and he's one of those authors where even in the scenes and the chapters and the bits that I don't love, even the bits where I'm like, oh, Dickens, this is awful, this is poor writing, or this is sexist, and this is terrible, I still always find his work fascinating. It always really interests me, and I always want to pick it apart and think about it and study it and read it again and again and again. What I mean is that I know Dickens will always be my favourite author, and I know Our Mutual Friend will always be my favourite book because it's no longer just like a reading thing, it's also just like a personality thing, which sounds really silly, but it is. And it has, it's become like part of my personality, like this is now one of the things I define myself by, I really like Dickens a lot. So something that made me smile recently, if you watch lots of YouTube you probably noticed that recently like YouTube has changed this thing where now like when you hover your mouse over someone's thumbnail picture in a video, it like starts the video or you like see a clip from the video. Um, and when I first noticed this I was slightly confused by it and I couldn't tell if it was something that like was happening to all YouTube videos or if it was like something you had to enable. So I searched books and things on YouTube to check that it was also happening on my videos or whether I need to like enable that thing to happen. And I discovered that when you search books 
books and things on YouTube, the first thing that comes up is books and things Dickens. And that made me like immeasurably happy, like more happy than that should have made me. But anyway, as I was saying, back in July of 2007, 10 years ago, I first read Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. And that was how I discovered Dickens and this very, very long, deep love of Dickens began. And because I've loved Our Mutual Friend for a very long time, and because I've read it quite a lot of times as well, this is my sixth or seventh reread of Our Mutual Friend, I would say. And because of that, I find it very hard to like remember how I originally felt about it. And I was thinking about this recently, and then I remembered that I had a way to find out. And from turning 13 to 14, at the end of this school year, after our exams, we had to do a school project where you had to write a book review of a few books. And I suddenly remembered that I had done Our Mutual Friend for that book review project. I reviewed Our Mutual Friend and Sense and Sensibility, which means I have, and I managed to find on my parents' computer, my original book review of Our Mutual Friend that I wrote when I was 14. And this made me very, very pleased. I'm going to read out some of it for you here today. So I'm going to read out some of my 14 year old review of our mutual friend for you now so that you can hear my original thoughts on the book. I'm not going to read out all of the review, I'm not going to even read out most of the review because 14 year old me was not a fan of spoiler free reviews and basically most of the review is just me like regurgitating the plot in shortened form. But I will read you a few extracts from my 14 year old thoughts. Our mutual friend Charles Dickens' last published novel is set in mid 19th century London and deals with issues about society, wealth and love. It was written in the time that it is set yet it is still regarded as a historical novel as it provides insight into what life was like during the time. And then there's like eight paragraphs of spoiliness and how much I love John Rooksmith and Mr Boffin. And then I talk about what my favourite bit of the book was, which is the chapter entitled The Golden Dustman at His Worst, which is still my favourite chapter in this book and like ever, and which I am very excited that I'll be able to finally talk about in the Our Mutual Friend read-long discussion video for the month of July. Overall, I think that Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens is a wonderfully written book with a fantastic plot that is perhaps one of the best books I have ever read. It provides a fascinating information about different classes and types of people, as well as historical information about the time. I think that serious readers and those interested in history and romance would find this book particularly good. I think that some people who are not interested in these sorts of things would find the book boring as it is a very long wordy story. However, I personally really enjoyed it and recommend it to many people. It is well written and the characters are all very interesting. I would not hesitate to read it again. So those are my 14 year old thoughts on Our Mutual Friend and it's nice to see that I loved it very much then. Though I also like that even at 14, discovering Dickens and loving it, I was also aware that Dickens is an acquired taste even then. I loved Our Mutual Friend then and obviously I still love it very very much now. And after reading Our Mutual Friend, I decided that I wanted to read all of Dickens, and I did. Three years later, by the end of the year 12 at school, so when I was 17 and a few months, I had read all of Dickens's finished novels. And I feel like that's pretty good going, and you can understand why I say that Dickens was like the defining literary experience of my teenage life. I was trying to work out what order I read Dickens's novels in, because I really have no idea. I know that the last one I read was The Pickwick Papers, which I find very, very satisfying, because I like that the first Dickens novel I read was his last published novel, and the last Dickens novel I read was his first published novel. Like, that pleases me, that's nice and symmetrical. But in terms of the rest in between, I really have no idea. I really just don't remember. Especially, I think, because I've read all of them twice and a lot of them three or four times. I don't really remember that first time I read them and I don't remember at what stage it came in. Like, I can't even remember what the second Dickens novel was that I read after Our Mutual Friend. I do remember that the first four Dickens novels that I reread were Our Mutual Friend, Bleak House, The Old Curiosity Shop, and Great Expectations. Our Mutual Friend, I definitely read when I was 17 in my last year at school because I wrote an essay on it for my A-levels and then the other three I remember I got audiobooks of in my last year at school and I joined a gym in my last year at school and I used to go to the gym and like be on the cross trainer and on the rowing machine listening to my Dickens audiobooks and it made me very very happy. That makes me think that Bleak House, Great Expectations and The Old Curiosity Shop must have been amongst the first Dickens books I read because if I reread them first I probably read them quite early but I don't know. I feel like I read Martin Chuzzlewit quite late and I feel like I read Dombey and Son quite late. I know that I read Little Dorrit in 2008 because I know that that was when the miniseries was out, that the BBC did, and I know that I read it at the same time as the miniseries, but apart from that, like, I have no idea, I don't remember, like, what order I read them in, and I find that really weird. Like, but anyway, as I was saying, after I had read all of Dickens, I just started to reread Dickens, I just started to work my way through, slowly rereading them. So I've now read them all twice, I reread David Copperfield last year, which was my last one I had to reread, and a lot of them I have read more than twice, because a lot of them I managed to study at school and university. For my A-levels in my last year at school, you got to do two free essays when you could write on whatever you liked, so 
episode for one essay I wrote on North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, my second favourite book of all time, and then for the other essay I compared Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens and The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope. At university I did English literature and history and I managed to get lots of Dickens into both sides of my degree. In my first year I studied Bleak House in one of my literature modules, in my second year I studied Hard Times both in my, one of my English literature modules and also in one of my history modules. I pressured my seminar group for my Victorian history module to do a seminar on the book Hard Times and like forced seven other people, including Nick, who was then not my boyfriend, to read Hard Times. In third year I wrote my English literature dissertation on Charles Dickens and I wrote it on how gender changes over time in the course of his novels, how it changes from his early novels to his late. I looked at the Pickwick Papers, Nicholas Nickleby, Martin Chuzzlewit, Dombey and Son, Bleak House, Little Dorrit and Our Mutual Friend. And then also in my history module on the French Revolution I managed to write about Tale of Two Cities because I was cunning like that and got Dickens everywhere. And since I left university I feel like Dickens is still more and more a part of my life. I'm hosting a read-along, I talk about Dickens a lot on this channel and I've recently been rereading lots of Dickens as well. Obviously I'm rereading Our Mutual Friend at the moment, I recently reread Great Expectations and Hard Times, I reread David Copperfield at the end of last year and I love making videos about Charles Dickens, I love talking on the internet about Charles Dickens. I think I love talking about Charles Dickens' books as much as I love reading them, which is another reason I think why he's one of my favourite authors because that's really important to me because I like talking about books and I like having discussions. It's interesting, I sometimes think I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Charles Dickens, like it is mostly love, obviously I do love him a lot, but I also dislike certain aspects of his work quite vehemently and there are characters of his and scenes of his and bits of his writing that make me really really angry. I sometimes feel like I am the most critical and the harshest of Dickens more than like any other author, author because I love him so much and because I hold him to such high standards. It's interesting, I did a video series about a year and a half ago now called What the Dickens on this channel which some of you will have probably seen in which I took a different Dickens novel every single day for two weeks and spoke about why I love it, some things I didn't like as much and it's interesting, some of the most negative and rude comments I've ever had on my channel are on those videos from people who are getting cross with me for being too harsh on Dickens and are getting cross with the things I'm criticising in Dickens and I find that really weird that like people are getting defensive of Dickens because I'm criticising him, I who love Dickens like so much. And sometimes I do get quite cross when people are like clearly you weren't reading it carefully enough and clearly you didn't understand Dickens and I'm like really you want to challenge me on Dickens, really? But I do think that I am quite critical of Dickens and I'm very very aware that he can be a very problematic author and in a way, and this sounds really odd to say, but in a way I find his books more interesting and he's more my favourite author for being quite problematic, especially because I'm so interested in history and because I love the Victorian period as a whole and I'm fascinated by it. The things that are problematic in Dickens' work are fascinating because they are so telling of the Victorian mindset. And I don't think I would find the gender and the presentations of gender and how it changes over the course of his books, I don't think I would find it so fascinating if it was just all quite nice and good. I don't think I would find it so fascinating if it wasn't problematic, if it wasn't difficult, if it wasn't sometimes offensive and infuriating. Like if I read a book that had been written in the last five years that implied some of the things Dickens implies about women and about women and men and their different roles within society, like I would not read that book, I would throw it across the room. But Dickens comes from another time, he is from a different era where different views were acceptable and that makes his books all the more fascinating for me. One of the reasons why I love Victorian literature is because I find the way people thought in the Victorian period very very fascinating. And the reason why I think Dickens is my favourite author and why, again, no one will ever overtake him as my favourite author is because it's not not just about reading his books, it's not just that I love reading his books, it's also that I love discussing them and studying them and talking about them and also enjoying them because it has to be both, like I've spoken about this before how I get annoyed with the emphasis on analysis in classics and not enough emphasis on enjoyability because another reason why I love Dickens is because his books are absolutely bloody hilarious, like they are so funny. I find Dickens hilarious and I find him moving and I find him sad and beautiful and fascinating and that is important, that fascination. The fact that over the last year and a half doing this our mutual friend read along. I have literally made a half an hour video every month just talking about three chapters and that's with a lot of cutting like I normally film for about two hours on three chapters of this book like that is how awesome he is it's how it's how great. I think that's all I have to say I've been filming for like half an hour and this was supposed to be like a quick like seven minute oh I've been reading Dickens for ten years yay kind of video so um it went rambly I'm sorry for that but this is what happens when I talk about Dickens I talk very very fast and very high and it gets all quite quite dramatic and intense but anyway I hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know what your defining reading experience of your teenage years was and also let me know like who your favourite author is and how long you have loved them for because I do feel like after 10 years Dickens and I have a pretty good bond and it's not it's not going anywhere. So thank you very much for watching and we'll be back very soon with a less manic bookish video.